was on a plane. And I had to break his heart. That grin on his face, the smile that we all know, and I... I had heard the news that he hadn't heard yet. And I had to take that smile away. Dixie was dead. He lost her, and he lost all hope inside him. I had to do that because of you. And now, I want answers. I lost our daughter. I traveled halfway around the world to know Vicky were safe. And I failed. Any of it anymore. That's it. Fine, get out. I am not here for you, Adam. Well, that's obvious. Why are you here? Not for JR. He doesn't need you. You heard him? He's fine. He's fine? He's fine? Did you see him? Do you know our son, Adam? He's broken. And you may want to stand around and pretend that that's not true and that it doesn't matter, but I am not about to. Look, Adam, I know what I've done to JR and to Jamie and to Paul. I'm not about to, to leave the boys again. They were boys when you left, not anymore. I will make it up to them. You died, Dixie. You died. You went away. You came back. No answer, no explanations, nothing. In God's name, will you ever make up for that? I don't know. But I'm not about to give up. What do you say we go find our son, Sergeant? We tell him that we love him and we will never leave him. I mean it. Oh. Brooke. Oh, I am so sorry. I'm a happily married man now. You had your chance. So many times. Goodbye. You know what your trouble is, Adam? So many wives, so few brain cells. You rip up Dixie in front of JR, and then you kick Di as a bonus? Dixie is a traitor to my son. You side with her, and you're betraying him, too. Oh, got it. You know, the last time I listened to you was never, and I am not here for you. I'm here for JR and Tad, and there's no way in hell I'm gonna let you make things any worse. Dixie abandoned JR. Now come on, why am I the bad guy? I'm the one who stuck around. You have jockeyed for ownership of JR since, my dear ex, you seduced Dixie. I wasn't myself. No, you were blotto. Because I couldn't give you a biological child, you manipulated Dixie into being a surrogate. Yeah. <laughs> that turned out great. I hadn't noticed. They are, has belonged to Dixie since the minute he was born. She was his sun and his moon and his stars. Oh, poetic gibberish. And you were a distant satellite on the left, and it drove you nuts. And when Dixie died, she became a saint. That's propaganda. People refuse to see the truth about Dixie. Well, now they have no choice. Right in their face. The way you look when you gloat, like you do in bed. It's a high for you. I'm pleased that you remember. You know what I think? I think that you have J.R. right where you want him, in pain, because of Dixie, because her mistake makes your controlling, manipulative version of love look sane. How did you go and inflict your, your parroting lecture on Dixie? She's the one who needs it. 
You know, you keep spouting things like Jr. is a man and he could handle it. It's almost like you're demanding that he push down his emotion and that he shut up about what a failure Dixie is. Don't you think he's noticed that? Don't you think he feels something about it? You know, maybe even feels that he's to blame, that he wasn't good enough? Don't you think you should think of your son once instead of your own? At the risk of offending your feminine sensibilities, yes, he is a man and he can handle it.